What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to a Stardom Sidham NFL Fantasy uh, video from the One Outer Podcast. Uh, this is week number seven. We recorded this about an hour and a half before game start so that we were able to accommodate for injuries and uh, COVID tests, if if applicable, uh, and things of that nature. So we get it out a little bit later this week, but we have up to date on injuries and things like that to make it to where we don't give you picks of people who aren't playing. Uh, as always, joined by my co host, Matthew. How's it going, man? Doing good. Uh, overslept a little bit this morning. Should have this out a little bit earlier, but you know we're gonna have it out before the games. So if you listen, I hope hope these players help you out. Yeah, better late than never. I've had a couple guys DM me uh, throughout the week asking for fantasy advice. I sent a couple of them to you. Um, so we've got a lot of people interested at least in fantasy. So I'm glad we're able to at least get this video out. Uh, but yeah, like he said, we'll we'll try to get through this pretty quickly. Uh, that way you guys have times to adjust your lineup. Um, but yeah, so we'll, we'll get into it. So starting with quarterback position, um, I'll start off this one, um, for starting this week, I'm going to go with Josh Allen against the Jets. Um, Josh Allen kind of in a little bit of a slump compared to how he started the year. Uh, you know, when he started the year, he was obviously an MVP candidate, fell off against the Chiefs a, a little bit. Uh, and against the Titans, where the Bills kind of have a two-game skid here, I think they get back on track today going up against the New York Jets, who have struggled all year and are inevitably tanking for Trevor Lawrence. Um, so I'm going to go with start Josh Allen. I'm expecting probably 300 yards and at least three touchdowns out of him today. My start on this week is uh, Big Ben at Tennessee. Um, Tennessee has given up the most points as a collective whole this year. Um, that's from a defense, and quarterbacks are averaging 24 points a game against the Titans. And, you know, Big Ben and the Steelers are undefeated for a reason. Um, he's got a good offensive core, good good weapons to throw to on the outside, especially with uh, Deontay Johnson back this week. So I look for Big Ben to have a big, uh, big game this week. You know, maybe 250, 300 yards, a couple touchdowns. Um, I don't think Tennessee forces a lot of turnovers either judging by the points that they have put up on them. So, Big Ben, it's my start on this week. Yeah, that's a really, that's going to be a really good game, and um, I'm excited to see that one. But, yeah, so everybody tuning in, if you're watching this, um, at the end of this, after we do fantasy, we're going to do our picks for this week too, so we'll get a little bit of game coverage. Um, but to go with the sit on four quarterback, I'm going to go with Derek Carr against Tampa Bay. He's played – pretty well all season uh he's got around a 70 percent completion percentage he's thrown for 250 yards in every game he's got like 10 let's see 6 18 11 to 1 touchdown to interception ratio so he's played very well all year i just think in this game against tampa bay coming off of um, tampa bay playing really well and shutting down aaron Rodgers, i think they continue that this week uh so for that reason i'm gonna go with keeping Derek carl on the bench I also had Derek Carr, um, if that tells you anything. But I'll, I'll write down two for all of them just in case we run into this problem. Um, my other one is Jimmy G. They were at New England today. Um, last week, Jimmy G had about as terrible fantasy performance as you could have, or two, maybe been two weeks ago. Um, New England is still a top five, top six defense. I think they have a great secondary. I don't see uh, Jimmy G passing the ball as much as normal against this team. So for that reason, he makes my sit -em list. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I've actually got another 49er players on here uh, that I'm going to start with, or that I'll get to later on with a similar points. Um, what about running back? Who you, who are you liking and who are you not liking at the running back position? For my stardom this week, I have Jamal Williams at Houston. Um, if you don't know already, Aaron Jones is out today. I think that plays a uh, – I think we see a lot of passing from Aaron Rodgers, but I do think Jamal Williams is capable of handling the load at running back. Um, he's a good receiving running back, so in a PPR fantasy, really any fantasy at all, I think Jamal Williams is going to put up some points today. Um, I think he finds the end zone a time or two, and for that reason. And also, you know, Houston is not really a great defense overall. Um, I think their rush defense is 21st in the league, 22nd in the league right now, so I like Jamal Williams. Yeah, I, I saw last night where Aaron Jones has ruled us out, or this morning, whenever it was. Um, but yeah, so Jamal Williams will be, I think I agree with you, he's going to, he's more than capable of carrying the load. Um, 
But for my start this week, I've got Zeke. Um, last week he only carried the ball 12 times, and they got ran over by the Cardinals. So I'm expecting him to have a big game this week. Um, and then to go along with that, Andy Dalton threw the ball 54 times, and I don't see him doing that again this week. Um, so I think Zeke's going get to a, get a heavy payload. Um, so if you're in a PPR, I would look at definitely starting him um, standard, you know, when it comes down to the yards. I don't know if he's going to get a lot of yards, but I do think he finds the end zone at least once, maybe twice. Um, so I'm going to go with starting Zeke. Uh, and another running back work, workhorse that I'm actually going to leave on the bench this week is uh, Adrian Peterson versus Atlanta. Uh, I think it's going to be the DeAndre Swift show. They used him a lot last week. He broke a couple big runs. I just don't see the Lions trying to power through the Falcons defense. I don't think Adrian Peterson is going to put up a lot of yards. Uh, I think DeAndre Swift is going to be the guy to go to this week, get it, get, getting him the ball out in the open field on swings and screens out of the backfield and things of that nature. Touching on what you said, I agree. Um, I think DeAndre Swift should be in your lineup if you have him. I actually have him wrote down here as my flex starter. Um, if you have him just because of the amount of touches he's seen in the last two weeks, I think he's a top 20, top 25 back this week, so I agree with that. But my running back sit on this week is Daryl Henderson versus Chicago. Chicago has the sixth best rushing defense in the league. Um, Daryl Henderson's been up and down in terms of points. He's getting his touches. He's getting – you know, 12, 15 plus a game. But does he find the end zone? I see um, the Rams finding the end zone more so through the air today than I do on the ground. So for that reason, Daryl Henderson is going to make my sit on this. Yeah, Daryl Henderson, he's been performing rather well, uh, better than I would say most people probably anticipated uh, at this point in the season. Uh, what about who you're going to start with uh, – at the wide receiver position. You can go, go ahead and give both, and I'll give both of mine, too. Okay. Uh, for my stardom this week at receiver, I've got Cole Beasley. Um, the, the Bills are still without John Brown, which is their number two guy now that Stephon Diggs is in town. I think Stephon Diggs has, of course, got the you know the shadow on him every, every week. And for the last, let's see, John Brown's been out since week two, and since week two, Cole Beasley has averaged um, 12.8 points per game, and he's seen nine, an average of nine targets, so he makes my stardom list this week and my sit him. Yeah, I'm going with Brandon Cooks versus Green Bay. Um, you know, I know Green Bay gave up some points last week to Tampa Bay. They look pretty rough, especially in the secondary. But Brandon Cooks has been, you know, rather good the last couple of weeks. Um, I think he's made himself a top 30 receiver. And he's, he, let's say, two weeks ago against Jacksonville went for 30. Last week he went for 21, but this week I think it's a different story. I think they uh, they shut Brandon Cooks down. I think he's got to lean more on the run game for Houston. And uh, for that reason, he makes my sit on list. Yeah, I've been a fan of Brandon Cooks ever since he landed in um, that Houston system with Deshaun Watson. Um, I think Deshaun Watson is probably one of the more slept-on quarterbacks uh, compared, to, compared to others. I mean, we obviously know how good he is. I just think he gets overshadowed a lot. Um, because Houston hasn't really been successful. Uh, so I agree with those picks. Uh, at the wide receiver stardom, I'm going with uh, Anderson as well. Uh, he's averaging 17.2 points per game in the PPR this year. Uh, he's getting a lot of touches, a lot of yards, and every every now and then he's found in the end zone. So I think he definitely should be a starter. For sitting this week, I'm going with Tyler Lockett. Uh, I think we touched on this the other day when we had a guy ask us about a, a trade that he was looking at. Um, Tyler Lockett, he's a dangerous receiver, and he's going to go off you know, once every few weeks. But right now, he's being so overshadowed by DK Metcalf. Past three, two weeks, he had two catches two weeks ago, four catches last week. So that comes out to three catches per game. Um, so I don't, I don't think um, it's – necessarily like he's just having a bad year i think this is dk metcalf's kind of coming to fruition and right now you need to feed dk as much as possible especially that he's performing well uh so i think that yeah. trend is going to continue metcalf's going to get a lot of touches um and that's in turn going to take away from tyler lockett's production i like it yeah that's a good one uh you know because typically tyler lockett's somebody you would think is a an automatic start but you know now with DK, it's it's kind of up in the air. 
But moving on to tight end position, uh, my starting this week is Jared Cook with the Saints versus Carolina. Um, the reason I have Jared Cook is because if you haven't seen the news, you know, no Michael Thomas again this week and also no Emmanuel Sanders. So, you know, a Drew Brees team, they're going to throw the football. And Jared Cook seems to be the primary target right now without uh, those two guys if they're not running the football. And also, just to add in another Saints player, if you need a last-minute flex play, Traquan Smith would be yeah. a great one to have. Um, but anyways, moving on to my sit at tight end, I got Hayden Hurst versus Detroit. Detroit against tight ends is top five defense. And, you know, Julio Jones is back now with the Falcons, so I think he's limited on the targets he sees because why would you not throw the ball to Julio and Calvin Ridley uh, more so? So that's why he makes my sit on list this week. Yeah, I actually didn't know that uh, Emmanuel Sanders was out. Um, I knew Michael Thomas was – hadn't crossed the news of him being out, so as soon as you said that, I was thinking the same thing. Traquan Smith would definitely be a guy that needs to find his way into a lineup if you were able to do that. Um, so I'll start, I'll start with my sit on at tight end because this kind of goes back to what you were saying earlier with Jimmy G. I've got Kittle, um, Kittle top two tight end in the league between him and Travis Kelsey. You can make the argument for who's the best, but in my opinion, I think, um, that was as fantasy goes off on my phone. Um, I think Bill Belichick is going to have something to keep Kittle in check. I think he's going to get his touches. I just don't think he's going to get a lot of production. I see him having two or three catches for probably 20, 30 yards. Um, so he's going to have a decent day in terms of averages, um, but I just don't think he's going to have a big fantasy football day. I think Bill Belichick has got something up his sleeve to kind of slow down George Kittle and take away that weapon for Jimmy G. Um, at stardom, I've got Noah Fant as he missed last week uh, with an injury, but up until that point, he's averaging around five catches per game, and he's putting up a ton of yards, too. Uh, I think fantasy-wise, he's averaging over 10 points. So you take that 10 points with catches and yards, throw in a touchdown, you're looking at almost 20 right there. Uh, so I think Noah Fant's probably the guy that you need to start at tight end this week, if possible. Yeah, no, you know, still no uh, Cortland Sutton out in Denver, so Noah Fant will always remain a, a good passing option for uh, the Broncos. Yeah, especially with uh, Drew Locke coming back. Uh, you know, he mm-hmm. has Jerry Judy and Philip Lindsay just came back too. So that Broncos offense is going to come to life uh, here pretty soon, if not this week. Um, but, yeah, so I, w- I would definitely keep an eye on Noah Fant for sure. I believe the last two times that he, he scored two touchdowns this year and the only two touchdowns he scored is when Drew Locke was behind center. So yeah, keep he's that kinda, in mind as well. He's kind of like Hunter Henry, uh, Justin Herbert. Hunter Henry's a yeah. favorite target. Tight ends are a favorite target of uh, Matt Ryan. You know, Austin Hooper performed well over the past two years. Um, he was actually my go-to tight end the past two years. I had Austin Hooper in my lineup every week except for when they had a bye week, and I've had Hayden Hurst in my lineup this week or this year uh, to replace him. So yeah, he's one. He's one of those guys that if you find a quarterback that loves a tight end, even if they don't necessarily put up a lot of yards, they're going to get get a bunch of catches. So if you're in the PPR, um, definitely need to identify those tight ends and try to get, get your hands on them as much as possible. Uh, defensively this week, uh, for my sit this week, I've got the Raiders against Tampa Bay. I think Tampa Bay and Tom Brady are finding their groove in that Bruce Arians offense. It took them a little bit to get going, um, but I think now that they're starting to pick up speed, they did it last week or two weeks ago in the second half against the Chargers in that second half shootout with Justin Herbert. Um, which who I th- a little off the record here. I think he puts up another 300 yard, four touchdown game today against the Jaguars. I'm excited to watch Herbert perform. Um, but back to my defense, I got the Raiders sitting just because I think Tom Brady and Bruce Arians and them are getting on the same page and things are starting to click. Um, and you know, Mike Evans had, I believe it was four touchdowns on the year to start and all four were like one yard, one yard, two yard and one yard. Um, so he's getting touchdowns, and once they start finding ways to work him more into the actual drive down the field, I think his numbers are going to skyrocket. So I would keep the Raiders on the bench for sure. My sit <clears throat> excuse me, my sit this week will be the Cardinals. 
uh, versus Seattle. You know, Seattle's got a high-powered offense, and the Cardinals in fantasy are a top-10 defense. So a lot of people probably have them in their lineup. I think it's, this week would be a good – you know, if you have the roster space available, I believe it's a good week to pick up a second defense because if you're like me, I don't like having two defenses, you know, on my roster at all unless one's in a bye week. Um, you know, so usually you'd be starting the Cardinals just given – you know, the p- amount of points that they put up. But this week, I think they give up a lot of points to Seattle. I don't see them slowing Seattle down any at all. Um, I don't see many people doing that, period. So for that reason, I'm going to have the Cardinals sitting this week. And then um, I start them. Uh, I'm going with the Browns at Cincinnati. I know last time these two teams played, the Browns gave up 30 points. Um, I don't see that happening this week. I think Cleveland – has a pretty pretty good defense. Um, I think they're good enough to force turnovers. Got a lot of big names on the team. And a lot of people that make plays. I think this week, if they can get a good pass rush on Joe Burrow, um, I think we can see a lot of turnovers. So that's why they make my stardom. Yeah, I had them down as well. I think it's kind of like we were talking about a minute ago with uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, that defense is starting to find its groove. Um, they had a, you know, they lost, was it last week they got beat? Um I can't remember if it was last week or two weeks ago, but nonetheless, um, that defense is starting to find its groove. Miles Garrett's having a really, really good season. Uh, So I had the Browns as a start as well. Um, Another team I'm looking at is the uh, 49ers. I think Cam Newton, you know, I told you to start Julian Edelman last week because he's a favorite target of Cam Newton, and then they just, Mm -hmm. you know, laid an egg yesterday, or last week, sorry. Um, But I think that's kind of going to, be the same situation this week. Although the 49ers are banged up, I see them capitalizing. You know, they played really well last week against the Rams offense, who is high octane, uh, have been putting up high numbers all year. Had a really good start. They shut them down. I think that loss to the Dolphins kind of woke up Kyle Shanahan and the uh, 49ers defense. So I don't see I don't see them getting beat bad, um, yeah. and I see them performing really well. And it's you know, any other week I'd probably get away from this pick, especially with the way that the Patriots were playing to start the year. Um, but with the, what I saw last week, I feel like they're still trying to get back in the, into the groove, into the, uh, you know, the smoother things. Yeah. Um, so for that reason, I think um, I would go with the 49ers for sure. Let's see. Is there anybody else you want to touch on on fantasy before we get into our picks for the week? Uh, no, I think I had the DeAndre Swift, Traquan Smith. Those were my two guys. Yeah. I was like, I had to make sure we talk about them. So, you know, other than them, Jamal, Jamal Adams, I think uh, pay attention to your backups. Um, and another person that's out this week, Joe Mixon. So if you have Giovanni Bernard yeah. or he's still sitting on the, uh, you know, the available players list, I think he's somebody worth adding. We don't know how long Joe Mixon's going to be out. Um, so that's another player to look at. Other than that, I think we've touched on just about everybody. Yeah, I'm going through right now. We got Curtis Samuel out for Carolina. John Ross is out. Austin Hooper's out with appendix. Um, Tanya's out for Green Bay. Sam Darnold's out. Jameson Crowder's out. Um, and that's really all for defensively. Or sorry, offensively. Defensively, Buffalo's without both of their starting corners. Uh, same with Carolina. Eli Apple and Dante Jackson's out. Um, that's something to keep an eye on for Buffalo, though. They play the, uh, say they play the Jets, so it won't be that big of a deal. But when you're missing Josh Norman and Tre'Davious Watt, uh, you're yeah. gonna take a little bit of a hit nonetheless. Tyler Offert's out. Sammy Watkins is out. Um, Justin Jackson's out. Julian Edelman is questionable. Robert Tunyon is playing today. Oh, is he? I must have yes. just read that then. They, they literally, I know last night I was looking at it at like midnight, but I just, first time I looked at it right now, because I have him on one of my teams, so he has been cleared. Yeah, he's still he's still listed as questionable right now, um, but yeah, I do, that may just be the, what it's listed as on here. Yeah. Um, hey, and somebody else right quick while we're here uh, to pick up, would be Philadelphia's Richard Rogers. Last week he had put mm-hmm. up fourteen and a half points. You know, no Dallas Goddard, no Zach Ertz. Yeah. Um, I know the Eagles have already played, but going into the next couple of weeks could be a serious waiver wire ad. 
Yeah, he he performed pretty well against the Giants. Uh, I was impressed yeah. with him. So, but yeah, a couple waiver wire picks. Uh, yeah, nonetheless, we can um, we're getting on into our picks here. Try to get this video out maybe about an hour before uh, games kick off. So we'll start with uh, Giants Eagles already played. Uh, so we'll start with our home team, the Falcons and the Lions. How do you see that one going? Um, you know, after last week, I'm liking the Falcons again. I think Julio is the glue to our offense, apparently. Um, I think having him um, back has been great uh, in terms of getting the first win on the board. I think this week, you know, the Lions, you know, we saw them beat the Saints a couple weeks ago. Um, we thought that might be a pretty decent team. And, you know, they're still sitting at two and three, not a bad team. They're in a great, they're in a great division. But I like the Falcons. Going with the home team, the good guys. Yeah, I do too. I saw an interview. I don't know if it's an interview or just a little short little um, press conference or one-on-one short statement from Julio talking about the transition to the new interim head coach. Um, and he was talking about how it's just completely different uh, to where in practice with Dan Quinn, like if somebody wanted to, re- uh, to redo a play, you know, it was like, okay, yeah, let's do it. Um, and with this guy, it's like, no, you don't get to redo it in the game, so I'm not going to let you redo it in practice. You'll get it later when it comes back on the script. Um, and just talking about how it's a completely different mindset um, yeah. and things like that. So I think that's a good thing. I think the Falcons are pissed off um, at the start. I think they want to perform well for the interim head coach, especially he was a defensive coordinator, correct? Prior? Yes. Yeah, so yep. you've got the defense that obviously have already familiar with him now that the offense are getting to know him a little bit better. Um Hopefully he can turn that thing around. I think the Lions are one of those teams where you don't really know what you're going to get. I mean, they they jumped on New Orleans 14 nothing and ended up losing that by, I believe, one score. Um, so I'm going with the Falcons as well just because I feel like they're, they're still kind of hot right now coming off that performance last week. They're, the offense has never been a problem for Atlanta. It's always been a banged-up injury on defense or a banged-up and injured defense. Um so I think for that reason, the Falcons are just going to be able to outlast um, the Lions. Uh, so getting into browns Bengals, uh, we touched on a little bit earlier. Uh, Joe Burrow performed really well in his first game against the Browns. I think this is a different Browns team than it was week one or two whenever they first matched up. I'm going to go with the mm-hmm. Browns taking that one pretty handily. Don't know what the over is on that, or sorry, the spread is on that one, but I would probably take it. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of the Browns over the Bengals today. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, you know, it all kind of relies on which Baker Mayfield we get. But I know from last week, you know, the Browns are best Russian offense in the league. Um, even without Nick Chubb, they have been. So, you know, no telling what they do when he comes back. But until then, you know, last week, Kareem Hunt had a pretty slow week. I think he only had nine points. Um, but this week, I look for him to get it back going on the ground. He had a good game against the Bengals. First time they played, that was the most points you know, that he scored. So I think the Browns have a good game this week, and I'm rolling with the Browns as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited for that game just because I'm ready to see Burrow play again. There's a lot of good rookies, um, and I'm, I'm excited for us to get to talk about Tua uh, in the next episode of the Point After Podcast, NFL version mm-hmm. at least. Um, so we'll hop into what I think is the game of the day with the Steelers and the Titans, both undefeated. Um Titans are 5-0, and Steelers are 5-0, and I believe that's correct. Yep. Yep. Um, I know the Titans have already had their bye week. Um, and Chase Claypool's performing really well. Big Ben's playing well. James Conner, you know, he's pr- been performing good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, you know, elite level, but he's been performing yep. really well as well. Um, I think that's going to come down defensively. I think that's going to be a really, really low-scoring game, like 27-23. Somewhere in that range, I don't see it going high scoring. I think it's going to be really, really defensive. Come down to turnovers, um, but I think is. T- do you know if T.J. Watt's playing? I, I do not know. I know he got banged up. I believe it was last week. Um, may have been two weeks ago when he was playing against his brother. Um, but I think T.J. Watt's been a force to reckon with all season. I think the Steelers' defense is probably the best they've been in the past couple of years. Um, I'm going to rock with the Steelers uh, strictly from a defensive standpoint. So, uh, But, yeah, I'm going with them. If you want to give your pick on this game and then get into the Saints-Panthers after that. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm with you. I'm rolling with the Steelers um, from a simple fact of the same as you. I think their defense is, you know, because the Titans have probably top two, top three most, you know, powered offense in the league in terms of points scored. 
but you know, I think the Steelers have a great offense as well. I think they can put up points. So if you come, if it comes down to who's going to get the last stop or that one turnover, I think the Steelers, you know, are more so capable of doing that with their defense. So I'm on with the Steelers as well. And rolling into the Panthers at New Orleans, um, I'm going New Orleans. I think we see a team that you know they're missing a lot of key players, but I think they realize this is a big game for them. I think this is one of those games that we see a classic Drew Brees performance. Um, I think Alvin Kamara has a great game. Panthers are, you know, relatively good defense. Sitting at three and three, that's with no Christian McCaffrey. So I think that, uh, you know, they they can definitely score and win games. But as far as today at New Orleans, I think the Saints are going to win this one. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. I just got to update. Curtis Samuel is playing today. Uh, that was updated nine minutes ago, so that came after uh, what I was looking at earlier. Uh, but look at the Panthers' schedule. You know, when they lost Christian McCaffrey, everybody was thinking that they would kind of go downhill, and it's been the complete opposite. They're three and one since losing Christian McCaffrey, um, yep. which to me is very, very, very surprising. Um, I can't explain that. I have no idea why it's being like that. Mike Davis. Um, that's, that goes back to another fantasy guy. If you need somebody, you need a good running back, Mike Davis is a guy to definitely pick up if, for some reason, he's still on your waiver wire. Um, they're performing really, really well. I just don't think they're going to be able to upset the Saints uh, playing at home in New Orleans. I don't, like you said, I think it's going to be a really, really Drew Brees, Sean Payton kind of dialing up, just hitting, not really taking advantage of their weapons because like you said Emmanuel Sanders is out Michael Thomas is out all they really have is Alvin Kamara um, I think it's going to be a big ground game for them Latavius Murray could have a big day um, and then mm-hmm. use Alvin Kamara um, a lot more receiving wise uh, opposed to rushing uh, so expect Latavius Murray to probably get a touchdown or two Alvin Kamara is going to have a couple of catches for big yards like he always does um, and then, yeah, Traquan Smith and Jared Cook are probably going to have a day, too. So I'm going to go with the Saints winning that one. Uh, Bills-Jets, this kind of goes back to the Browns and the Bengals. I don't see it being a close game. Um, I think Bills take this one. I believe last I checked, the spread was like the Bills are minus 10 favorites. I could see mm-hmm. them covering that. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to put any money on it because uh, I got my money elsewhere this week. But I like I like the Bills at minus 10, uh, to be honest. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, the Bills, let's say they're sitting at 4-2 and two right now. Um, I still think they're one of the top-tier teams. I think we're going to see them go a long way in the playoffs. Um, the best game Josh Allen has had in terms of fantasy points this year has been against the Jets uh, week one, I believe. So, you know, the Jets are 0-6 for a reason. I think they're about to be 0-7. So I'm rolling with Buffalo as well. Yeah, now we're – We're getting our way into a sleeper game. Uh, I think this one's going to be a lot closer than people are expecting. It's NFC East matchup, the uh, division that nobody seems to want to win. Uh, Cowboys and the Washington football team. I'm going to roll with the Cowboys. I think, you know, like I said in the fantasy portion, Zeke's going to have a big day. Amari Cooper's performing well. Um, Mm -hmm. Everybody last week for the Cowboys seemed to have a big day, which in turn, you know, Andy Dalton did throw the ball 54 times. Um, but Washington and Kyle Allen, Kyle Allen is really familiar with Ron Rivera's, uh, scheme. I wouldn't be surprised if it comes out in somewhat of a stalemate, uh, to see Alex Smith get some more playing time. I don't, I don't know what the whole situation is with Dwayne Haskins. They say they're kind of saving him for, to help him grow and then use him again next year or something like that. I don't think that's the case. I think at some point this season, they're going to turn to Alex Smith. Alex Smith is going to have a great career or a great season and either end up being the guy in Washington throughout or he's going to go sign somewhere else um, to help finish out his career. So uh, I'm expecting this to be a really, really, really good game, but I do think the Cowboys are able to pull it out in a close one. Yeah, this is one of those games that I think I could see, you know, the Cowboys coming out and Andy Dalton just looking awful and the uh, – Washington football team just running away with it, but do I think it happens um, overall? No, I don't. I think the Cowboys win this one. I think they win it on the legs of Zeke. I think he, like you said earlier, I think he has a big game. Um, I, you know, I, I hope the Cowboys don't throw the ball 54 times, although I'd like to see them throw the ball that much to see if they could even beat this team. 
But um, overall, no, I don't think they're going to win. I'm rolling with the Cowboys. But I'm with you. I think uh, I think Alex Smith is going to be the guy going forward for uh, the football team. Yeah, and I hate that we have to refer to him as that. I'm, I'm looking forward yeah. to their new branding. I'm, I'm tired of calling him just Washington. Um, so now got a couple good games here we're going to talk about. We got, first, we got the Packers, te- Packers, Texans, and then we got the Seahawks and the Cardinals. Um, Packers, I think they're going to pull this one out just because Aaron Rodgers is kind of pissed off last week. He did not perform well at all. Um, mm-hmm. He didn't seem too mad about it on uh, Aaron Rodgers Tuesday with Pat McAfee. He wouldn't like, you know, just distraught about it. He kind of mentioned that over the past couple, I think the last five games for the Packers where they've lost, it's been um, they get blown out. You know, it's not like they lose close games or something like that. It's like they, it's not even close. Um, and yeah. if you looked at his facial expressions while he was playing, it kind of seemed like he was like, okay, well, this is one of those games. You know, like it's going to happen. Um, where the cards aren't going to go your way and everything's going to seemingly fall apart at the seams. And to me, it just seemed like he was like, okay, this is one of those games. Let's get through it and then look forward to next week. So I think Aaron Rodgers is going to carry the Packers to a victory. And the Seahawks-Cardinals, I think that's going to be a really close, high-scoring game. Um, Looking at around 40 to 30, somewhere in there, um, my prediction is 41-33 Seahawks. I think it's going to be high-scoring. Uh, but I got the Seahawks pulling that one out. Uh, yeah, I'm with you on the Packers. I uh, think Aaron Rodgers has his typical Aaron Rodgers game today, um, especially coming off a loss. And coming off a loss, let's see, in the last five years, coming off a loss, <clears throat> Aaron Rodgers is a top five fantasy quarterback. So I think that's something to uh, keep in mind. I think Aaron Rodgers has a big day. I think the Packers win that one. I think it's a high-scoring game. And then rolling on to the Seahawks and Cardinals. Um, I could see the Cardinals getting the, giving the Seahawks their first loss, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think uh, I think the Seahawks are, you know, one of those teams that you're going to have to play your best game against them, and the Cardinals are leaving too much room for error. Um, I think it's going to take a damn near perfect performance to beat the Seahawks, and I don't think the Seahawks or the Cardinals are capable of doing that this week. So for that reason, I'm rolling with Seattle. A big fan of the Cardinals. I think this is probably a better year than what most expected them to have. Uh, I know, especially me and you, they probably pre- overperformed compared to what we had them going down as this year. Uh, but yeah, like you said, you're going to have to play perfect to beat Seattle. And I don't see the Cardinals. The Cardinals will play well. They just won't play well enough to pick up a win, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, Chiefs Broncos yeah. touched a little bit on it with the Broncos offensively, um, but the Chiefs are the Chiefs and. Arguably the best team in the AFC. They haven't looked as great as they have in the past, um, mm-hmm. but it is 2020 and nothing makes sense. And I don't even know what's going on in college or the NFL, to be honest. Uh, you know, we do these. I spend hours and hours covering football, studying football, watching games, watching tape, uh, keeping up with uh, injuries and who's out and who's not. And I, nothing makes sense to me, man, to be honest. Like, yesterday I felt so good about half of my picks for college, and then it just all blew up in my face. And I I don't know what's going on. Chiefs, like I said, they don't look too great, uh, but they're going to be able to pull out the win against the Broncos today. Yeah, I'm with you. I think the Chiefs won this one, you know, fairly easily. I think Omaha Holmes has a big day. And, you know, maybe we get to see a little bit of Le'Veon Bell, how he's going to fit in with this offense. Um, but, yeah, I think the Chiefs won this one. Pretty easily. I'm going to say by two scores or more. Yeah, I'm excited. I think we do see Le'Veon, even if it's not a lot. Um, I think they've got to – when you have that weapon, you're dumb to keep him on the bench. I think we see a lot of two-back sets or um, Clyde being the the sole running back, but then Le'Veon being like a slot wide receiver, getting a lot of jet motions or things like that. Even if you don't get the ball, just kind of utilizing him and the threat that he is to a defense. Uh, yep. What about San Francisco and the Patriots? Uh, who who you think is going to pull that one out? Um, I think the Patriots are going to win. Uh, I, you know, I think that uh, San Francisco is a good team. They've got a lot of weapons. But this week, you know, no Raheem Mostert, and he's been a key to their success, I think. Um, he always manages to find the end zone when he is playing. But uh, – you know, I, I still think the Patriots have a better coaching staff. Um, I think they have the players to win games like this, and I think this is one of those games that they need to win. 
And I think Bill Belichick knows that. And that's for that reason, I think the Patriots are going to win this one. Yeah, that's going to be a good game nonetheless. Um, I'm excited. There's a lot of good games this week. It made it hard to kind of make a lot of these picks. Um, cause it's like Seahawks Cardinals. I could see the Cardinals winning. If they do, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, same with the 49ers Patriots. I could see that game going either way. If the Texans beat the Packers, I wouldn't be too surprised about it. Um, I'd be a little, a little shocked, but nonetheless, I could see the Texans performing well enough to beat the Packers, especially after last week. Um, yeah. But we're getting into the uh, Minshew Mania and old Air Bear, Justin Herbert. I, I touched on this earlier. I think Herbert has a big day. I think he goes for 304 touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he he may not, going into the season, everybody was like, all right, Joe Burrow's the guy, Joe Burrow's rookie of the year, um, just because really who else is going to kind of oppose him for that. Um, and Joe Burrow's played really, really well, given what he's having to deal with, especially with the offensive line. But – I think if Justin Herbert continues to play like this, he's my pick for Offensive Rookie of the Year um, or Rookie of the Year in the NFL. Um, I think the Chargers are able to pull it out against the Jaguars. Yeah, I'm with you. I think uh, Chargers win this one as well. I think they're the best 1-4 team I've ever seen, and that's without their starting running back um, in Austin Eckler. He's a great fantasy player. Um, I think he's a big role in that offense, and they've seemed to manage without him. It's a you know, the record doesn't really show. But this week against one of five Jags team, I think I'm um, with you. I think Herbert has a big day, and I think the Chargers win this one. Yeah, in my opinion, the AFC West is probably the best division in the AFC, kind of like the NFC South. Um, it's, I mean, you got the Broncos who, if they can find their groove um, and be consistent, you know, I, I, I just think the AFC West is that um, – division where you have teams that will miss the playoffs that you should be all right well this team deserves to get in over maybe the afc south winner um yeah or thing like kind of like the nfc east you know whoever finishes third in the nfc south will probably miss the playoffs ultimately but you could still make a case for them getting in over whoever wins the nfc east and same with the nfc right. west too um but yeah so we so said we got two more games we got the bucks and the raiders and the bears and the rams uh, Rams kind of took a step back last week against the 49ers. Uh, the 49ers played really, really well. I think they were they were pissed off and on the revenge tour for the way they played the week before to the Miami Dolphins, where they got obliterated at home. Um, so I think the Rams kind of same thing. Ram or the Bears are coming off a win last week where they beat the Panthers by seven. Um, mm-hmm. I think the Rams just kind of pick up steam, have a big offensive day, put up. 45 points, somewhere in there. Um, I've got the Rams winning that one. Then the Bucks and the Raiders, we talked about this uh, when we were doing our fantasy picks at the beginning of the video. Buccaneers are going to win that one. I don't think it's going to be really close. I think that one's going to yeah. be a two- or three-score game, and Tampa Bay and Bruce Arians are going to run away with it. Yeah, on that, I'll touch up on that game right quick and then go back to the Rams and Bears. But uh, I think we're finally starting to see the uh, the Buccaneers team we thought we would see at the beginning of the season. I think they, that win last week is what's going to get the ball rolling for them. Um, I think that win last week also is what's going to help them win the NFC South. Um, you know, I think we see a big game for them. And not to mention, you know, they added Antonio Brown, which we'll talk about that more in our next episode, I'm sure, with Tua and all that. But uh, Rams and Bears, um, I'm going to take an opposite approach from you. I think the Bears have a defensive day. I think we see one of those days where Jared Goff throws an interception or two. Um, I don't think they're able to get it done on the ground with Daryl Henderson either. So for that reason, I'm going to go with the Bears. Yeah, that's it goes back to what I was saying. That's one of those games where I wouldn't really be surprised if it goes either way. Um, and you can make a good case for uh, why either team would win. Yeah, I make a good case for why the Rams would win. You make a great case for why the Bears would win. So, yeah. Um, it's, there's a lot of those games today. I'm excited. We have a 61 minutes before kickoff uh, as we're wrapping up this episode. So um, if you're watching this, I appreciate you tuning in uh, right before kickoff. Hopefully we're able to help you with your picks. Um, if you've made it to this point in the video, I'm assuming you're getting ready for kickoff just like we are. Uh, but nonetheless, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, it was a long video, but I feel like it was uh, much needed for you guys. Um, and we apologize for getting it out so late. Had a little 
little hectic weekend. I overslept yesterday morning. Matthew overslept this morning by a little bit. So uh, it happens. Uh, but nonetheless, expect yep. um, college football should come out Tuesday or Wednesday this week. Uh, hopefully when we get NFL out like the day later. Um, or something of that nature. We got a lot to talk about. We got AB. We got Tua. Hopefully, we can talk about Le'Veon. Um, we can talk about all these big matchups. We can talk about the shit show that is the NFC East, um, the, conf- the the division that nobody wants to win. The NFC South is coming to fruition, especially if the Falcons win. So we have a lot to talk about. Uh, looking forward to covering NFL next week. Matt, you yeah. think you want to say to wrap it up? Well, I just want to say uh, appreciate it if you're listening. Uh, we we have some apparel still. If you guys are looking for a, a new shirt, I know if you're like me, you, you always love a good shirt and or sweatshirt. But um, other than that, man, I'm, thank you all for listening. I'm glad we got to do this again. Looking forward to next week already. And uh, I think, you know, today's going to be good day of games. I know last week there was only like two, you know, 3 o'clock, 3.30 window games. I think this week there's more, so... If you've got red zone, utilize it. I know it's one of my favorite things I look forward to on the weekends. So I'm ready to see how this day goes. Yeah, I pull up the schedule really quick. We have seven games at 12, four games at three, um, and then the Monday night and Sunday night football too. So, yeah, uh, going to be a good NFL red zone day. Lots of football, lots of stuff to talk about. Uh, but, yeah, like you said, we do have a couple of apparel out now. We have mostly college. Um, we're still working on some NFL ideas. Um, so if you guys have any shirt ideas or anything that you want to see, uh, let us know. and We can get that out for you. And that goes beyond just apparel. We have um, anything you want to see us talk about in a podcast uh, or a separate video or just in general, maybe make a TikTok or something, uh, something quick, uh, just anything football-related content for you guys, let us know. Uh, and we'll yep. be more than happy to get that out. Um, so nonetheless, uh, we're going to close it off here to get this video out for you guys for week seven kicks off today at noon. Uh, we appreciate you guys tuning in and, uh, we look forward to seeing you guys next week.